What's up audit fans, Dr. Amanda White here and today on Amanda Loves to Audit is the first in a series of collabs that I have with the AUASB. Now the AUASB is the Australian Auditing and Assurance Standards Board. They're the ones that set our standards here in Australia and I've been asked to collaborate with them on some video projects around audit which is really, really exciting and today is going to be the first one. So let's get into it. Welcome back to my regular subscribers. If you're new to the channel, my name is Amanda White. I have a PhD in behavioral audit. I teach auditing to undergraduate students at university. Um, and I came from an audit background at the big four firm PricewaterhouseCoopers, which is now called PwC. Now in today's video, it's the first in a series in collaboration with the AUASB. Now the AUASB is like all other national standard setters, they set the standards for their specific country, promulgated from standards that come from the International Auditing and Assurance Standards Board. But they have to make small adjustments and changes for individual countries. Now, I've been appointed as an academic scholar for 2019 with the AUASB, and that means that part of my project is to develop great new communication tools and resources to help people understand more of what is an audit and what is covered in assurance. If you're an auditor, what does audit quality mean? How can you help improve audit quality? And what sort of resources are out there to help you? So in the first video in the series, we're going to talk about Audit 101, the basics. What is an audit? What is assurance? And how does that differ from other types of engagements? My first interview in this series is with Tim Austin. You'll find out more about Tim's role um, at the AUASB, but he's going to go through the basics with us. So let's get into it and I'll see you on the other side. So my name's Tim Austin. I'm a project manager at the AUASB. I've been here for the last two years. My role is mainly to lead projects under the supervision of other senior project managers and the technical director. Assurance for me is all about a way of enhancing credibility of information. So under our standards, it's generally that you have a subject matter, which is relevant for a person or another organisation. You have criteria to assess that subject matter against, and you have, I guess, an outcome, whether you want a high level of assurance over that information or more of a limited level of assurance over that information. So under our standards, generally what you have is a three-party relationship that you're working with, where you have management who prepare that information, you have an intended user, so who you're actually preparing that information for, and then you have the assurance practitioner who comes in and provides credibility of that information for that third party. So in Australia you have, I guess, different ranges of reporting for different people. So in, in the easiest term to understand is in general purpose financial statements. The reason they're general purpose is because they're for a wide range of users, not just shareholders of the company. So they can be used for banks, they can be used by customers to determine how good how credit worthy you are, or they can be used by, I guess, suppliers in the future to determine whether you, you're actually a good business to do business with. And it's all about for providing assurance over that, gives credibility and makes people more, I guess, able to make a better decision based on that information. Well, an audit, I think there's a subset of assurance. So an audit, how we think about it, is usually over historical financial information. So this is usually in Australia, general purpose financial statements prepared for ASX listing or for corporations like purposes. So an audit's really a reasonable assurance engagement, but focused on historical financial information. So it's probably the next question is what's a reasonable insurance? So reasonable assurance is a high, but not absolute level of assurance. So you're doing, the audit is doing enough work and gathering enough evidence to make a conclusion about the reliability of the information that's high, but they're not saying this information's perfect. So it's not a guarantee? It is not a guarantee. So other factors come into it, there's materiality. So the auditor actually hasn't looked at every single line item in the financials or in whatever subject matter they're looking at. They've determined what's an appropriate threshold because it would be too costly, 
wouldn't really be useful for somebody to go and look at every single transaction in a business. So if you think about BHP or any of those large multinational businesses, if somebody was looking at every single transaction, it did cost more than probably their revenue for the year. Now, I just wanted to jump in on this particular point that Tim's raising here. In the days of manual testing and checking of transactions, it certainly doesn't make financial sense to test every single transaction at BHP or Woolworths or any other large organization. However, things are certainly changing when it comes to technology. We're seeing more AI analysis of large data sets with data analytics tools and data visualization tools. So it may be possible in the very near future that we actually do test all of the transactions. Now, we're probably still not going to give a guarantee because there are still estimates and areas of judgment and estimation, but it's important to note that things could definitely be changing in this particular area. Well, the main way to look at it is actually the conclusion that's given on both or the report. So under a reasonable assurance engagement, you, you're presenting a positive report. So you're saying nothing. So I've ordered this and it's based on my the procedures that I've done. It's true and fair or materially correct. With a limited engagement, you pre, you're presenting a negative opinion. So it's saying nothing has come to my attention from what you've done. You haven't dug any deeper other than when something came to your attention. Great upon procedures actually provide no assurance. What they're trying to do is, or what they do do, is report on factual findings. So in Australia, they're used, auditors are engaged to do these things. Really what they do is go into a business, there's a set of objectives, so criteria, and they just report on those criteria. There's nothing more, there's no opinion provided. All the auditor will say is, out of these, potentially it's like, all right, I want you to check 100 invoices and make sure they all got signed and paid to this thing. The report says 95 out of 100 invoices were signed and paid to this thing. No other information. That's all you need to provide under a, a greater prompt procedures engagement. A big thanks to Tim for being interviewed as part of this project. A common misconception is that agreed upon procedures provide assurance, and that's definitely not the case. Um, there is a particular university rankings uh, system, and they say, oh, we have an audit by a certain uh, big four audit firm. But when you actually go to the report, it's agreed upon procedures. There's no set criteria that all of the universities agree on. It's just the criteria of the ranking organization. So sometimes you need to be careful when people say, I'm having an audit, or I'm getting these results or information audited, make sure that you check the actual information and see whether it is an audit opinion, whether it is a review opinion, or whether it is an agreed upon procedures and they're just providing a report. It's really easy for people to get caught out when we don't understand the terminology. If you have any basic terminology questions or anything else about sort of an audit 101, drop them in the comments. Our next video coming up is going to be an interview with Professor Roger Simnett. He's one of Australia's most prolific researchers. Um, he's been on an international audit standards board. He's the chair of the Australian Auditing and Assurance Standards Board. Uh, he's also my PhD supervisor from a very long time ago, but I'm gonna grill him about audit quality. What is audit quality? What does it mean? How do we measure it as part of this series to help you become a better auditor by understanding audit quality and understanding what you can do to help improve it? So that's all for this week. If you thought the video was useful, of always, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. As always, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. There are plenty more videos and I post weekly. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram where I do post daily. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.